Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop, where today we're going to build a desk called a secretary. Plenty of draw storage down below, a nice big writing surface, and a place to organize those bills that you're going to pay later. Now, it's a complicated project, so let's get going. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Well, once again, I'm at one of my favorite antique shops, Up Country, which is in Royal Tunbridge Wells. And there's a piece I want you to see. You know, all the secretaries that I've ever looked at, most of them were built out of hardwoods. This particular secretary is all pine, very unusual. It's an English piece, and it dates to about 1800. It has some nice dovetail joints up at the corner here, which I would expect. But this is a little unusual. The breadboard edge of the top has been mitered. And that's something I think I'll do. A nice case of drawers down below with good brasses. And even though it's meant to sit on a level floor, it's been temporarily shored up because this is so uneven. Now these little devices here that pull out very smoothly are known as loafers. And they will support the writing surface when it's down. In the back, there's a nest of compartments and some nice little storage drawers. I better get my tape measure and start measuring this one. Well, here it is, our version of that antique secretary desk we saw at UpCountry. And I stayed pretty faithful to the original, constructed it from number one common pine, and the only thing I changed was the arrangement of the compartments inside the desk. So if you'd like to build one of these for your home, a measured drawing with the materials list is available. And you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now before we get started, I want to take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now before I left the shop last night, I glued up all the panels I was going to need to make the desk. This happens to be a side panel, which is three one by eights. Now this morning I came in and cut them to the right size and started making a series of dados, which will receive the draw frames and the top surface of the desk. To make the dados, all I'm using is a straight edge clamp and my router, which is equipped with a bit the right size to match the thickness of my boards. All I'm going to do is run the flat side of the router base against the straight edge clamp. Now this small rabbit receives a piece of quarter inch plywood that seals off the back of the secretary. Now I'm ready to make the slanted cut on the side panels. And to make sure that both ends come out identical, I've clamped the panels together here at the workbench. Installed a straight edge as a guide, and I'm going to use my circular saw up against it. Now normally I like to keep the broad side of the base on the save section, but because of the clamps and the straight edge, I'll have to use the narrow side. I've just ripped an angle on a board which will become the top of the desk. The angle is 43 degrees, and that corresponds to the slant of the top. Now, I don't want this corner just to be sharp here, so I'm going to square it off 90 degrees to the cut I just made. The top is joined to the side with dovetail joinery. And to mill that, I'm going to use my dovetailing jig. I followed all the manufacturer's instructions and set the top piece of the secretary in the jig with the bottom facing out, the top against the jig. And I want it to have six dovetails. 
So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, just properly spacing these pins. And you see what's going to happen as I cut the router and come around each one of these pins, I'll form a tail. I'm using my router, which is set up with a dovetailing bit, and this little collar right here follows the jig. Now we'll just flip it end for end and do a similar operation on the other end. Now I take the side of the secretary and install it in the top of the jig to cut the pins. There are two boards that form the main shelf, one in the back that overlaps, one in the front. The next thing I want to do is make this little OG detail. Now the bit that I'm using here is a 5 30 seconds Roman OG. With a rabbet milled opposite the OG cut, this will allow the backboard to overlap the front board. Now the little notch that I've just made in the backboard is necessary so that as I slip it in, it'll conceal the end of the dado cut. Now this dado along the back edge of the main shelf will receive the solid pine back that goes behind the cubby holes. Well that takes care of the groove in the underside of the top which will also receive that pine backer. And even though I have a divot here, it's never going to show. The drawers are supported by and ride on frames which fit into those dados I cut in the sides. The individual frame parts are connected with mortise and tenon joinery. The mortises are made with a single purpose machine just to do that. The tenons are made here at the table saw using my stack dado head cutter. The first cutter, the cheek cuts. The final step in milling the tenon was made by simply raising the saw blade up to narrow the tenon the right amount so that it properly fits in the mortise, like that. The upper frame has end pieces which are slightly wider and it also needs a groove for this piece of pine right here which separates the drawer and the loafer, also keeping them on track. The frames are assembled just using some glue, but I'm only gluing the tenons that are at the front of the frame. The back tenons will just float, and that's so when the frame is installed on the sides of our secretary, the side will expand and contract instead of splitting. Well, before I go any further with the assembly, I want to take the time now to sand any of the interior areas that are going to show that I won't be able to get to later.
And here's the quarter inch plywood back, which will square it up and add a lot of strength. Now to install the frames, I slide them partway into the dado, put a little glue just at the back edge of the dado, and a little bit of glue right on the front edge of the front part of the frame. Now I just slide it in until I get to my mark, right distance. Okay, now remember there's going to be a face frame rail that fits in that groove. Now a clamp. Now the back frame, I want to tap it up against the quarter inch plywood. And that's it. We noticed on the antique original that there was a fair amount of wood between the drawers. So that means I can't get away with just the thickness of a shelf or a frame. I'm going to have to add a piece of wood. So each piece is taken and first notched so that it fits in the same dado as the shelf or frame. But it stands proud of the side. So now I want to just remove a little bit of material so it'll be flush. Now after I do the same detail on the other horizontal members, and install them. Before I leave tonight, I'm going to put this thin strip all the way down the front edge. Now, it's tedious work, but it makes all the difference in the world. Well, good morning. Last night, I did finish assembling the face frame, and all that's left now to do is sand it all smooth. I started by installing some cleats this morning. The one I just nailed will guide the bottom of the lower drawer. And up here at the top, there's a cleat that's just wide enough so that one side will guide the drawer and the other side guides the loafer. Now, if I tip the whole carcass up on the side, you can see that underneath each of the frames, there's also a cleat. And that'll prevent the drawer from tipping out too far as it's opened. The next thing I want to do is get started on this decorative base. The base is nothing more than three boards with this decorative edge that I'll miter at the corners. Okay, that's perfect. Now I'll strengthen this joint with biscuits. I can't think of a better way to strengthen a miter joint like this than to add biscuits. Now the feet for the secretary start out as nothing more than a three and a quarter inch by one inch block of wood, and I've rounded all the corners. Now the base has had sufficient time to dry, so now I'm going to attach it to the carcass with just a few screws. And that's all there is to securing the feet. Well, let's get to work making the drawers. Now, you've seen me use the material that forms the ends and the back and the bottom. It's a cabinet grade plywood. The front of the drawer is solid pine, and it has this decorative bead around the edge. The first thing I want to do is rabbit the drawer front, and you'll notice that the rabbit at the top is a little deeper than the one at the bottom. I'll do that at my table saw. This groove will receive the plywood back. That's the groove that'll receive the plywood bottom.
Now that's the slot for the plywood in the draw front. Now let's try a trial fit. Good. Now here's the decorative bead on the draw front edge that I've made using just a portion of the 532nds Roman OG bit set up here in my router shaper. And now for a little assembly. Now for the back of the drawer, and you'll note there's no groove for the plywood bottom. It'll simply be nailed to the bottom edge. Okay, it's nice and square. Now I can nail it at the back edge. Okay, drawers fit nicely. Now the loafers are made up of two pieces of the half inch plywood I used in the drawers glued together, a little pine front that I milled the same edge as I used on the drawers and then ripped it a little bit thinner, and a brass knob. Let me show you how it all goes together. First I just take the glued up plywood, position the front on it, and drill a pilot hole. Next I'm going to use one of these, sort of a bolt screw combination. Now a little bit of glue. Set the pine piece in place and put on this little brass knob, which holds everything together. To install the loafer, I simply slide it in the slot, and then I want to install this little plywood block, which will prevent it from sliding out as it's open. What I'm starting to do now is work on the slant front of the desk, and it has a mitered breadboard edge. So to form the tongue to hold the breadboard edge, I've taken the blank and clamped this plywood jig that I've made onto the blank, and using my router with a straight cutting bit and this collar, which rides against the edge of the jig, I'm able to form one side of the tongue. Now I'll reset the jig on the other side and finish it. I've just removed the surplus along the edge because all I really need is a three-quarter inch long tenon. Now I want to make a groove in the breadboard edge at the table saw. Well now a little bit of planing and fitting until it's nice and tight. Now the only place I want to put glue is right at the miter joint. The rest of it I want to float. Now we'll clamp it together. Now just a dowel pin. 
just going to put a little dab of glue before I drive it in the last little bit just so it won't fall out later. Well, while the miter's on the writing surface dry, let's get to work on the compartments, starting with the cut on the end of this horizontal piece. Each end gets two 45-degree cuts, and I'll show you why in a minute. Now, with a slightly different setup, I formed a V-groove in the vertical piece, and this is how the two pieces go together. I've made these grooves by making two passes through the table saw, and they will receive these thin vertical partitions. Now there's a little decorative groove, and that's easy to do. Now here I removed the top from the desk, flipped it upside down, and I'm making some grooves at the radial arm for those vertical petitions. Okay, now I'm just gonna dry fit everything together. I don't wanna glue it until after I put the finish on the cubby holes. The scroll saw makes easy work of cutting the decorative brackets for the pigeonholes. These don't get glued in until I apply the finish. The small drawers are constructed exactly like the big drawers, with one exception. I'm using a simple rabbit joint at the front instead of a dovetail. Well, now back to the writing surface. I need to make this detail right here, a beveled rabbit. And I'll do that in two steps. Now I'll switch bits to get that bevel. Now on the outside edge, I'm going to put the same detail that I used on the drawers. Well, you've seen this technique before. A little jig in combination with my router makes mortising for the hinges easy. Okay, a little bit of final sanding, and this will be ready for the finishing room. No wax on this piece. To get that English country look, a coat of this water-based stain, and after that dries, a couple coats of tough water-based polyurethane, and this piece will be ready for the hardware. Well, here's what it looks like after carefully laying on five layers of gloss polyurethane. And I'd say that this desk is ready to go to work, either paying the bills or storing those old checkbooks. <laughs>